Alrighty, let's go ahead and start this sucker up. Today's going to be timelines. So the question here is, let's say we were in here, can we add a timeline directly? We can do the curves, which aren't an issue. But are timelines tied to blueprints? Okay, they are. Now are timelines inside of anything in particular? Character, come on. Let. Let's see. So, let's see. That's the component timeline. So I guess the timeline is a component then. So. Um, I guess we'll put it under components then. We'll do a whole new, okay, so WTF. We should have components, there we go. We have to do a new folder for timeline. And let's do, go from here. We'll do a new level. And we'll save out the level. Let's do control S, control Alt S. Okay, where's the damn save button? Uh, seriously, save all doesn't, thank you. Let's see, component, timeline, and this will be the timeline map. Okay, so we've got, let's see, we've got a timeline, and we can make stuff. Hello, Barack. What do you mean by less specific? Do you have any examples of what you would like to see? Let's just set up a generic actor. Let's see, timeline actor. And we'll put our timeline in here. And we'll just show all of our stuff. Okay. So here's going to be our generic timeline. We'll have to show the different nodes. Um, we'll fire it off at the begin play. We'll cover our different startings. Cover our interiors of the timeline. The options we'll cover separately. Okay, so let's give ourselves a cube. And we're gonna. I'm done with cube. Let's give ourselves a spear. There we go. And I will start. I'm gonna. We'll set up a material. I'll post the material. I think I'd like to do that. Okay, so material, material, time, line, actor. And let's make this really simple. We'll make it a solid color and uh, we'll make it an emissive glow. Yeah, we'll do something like that. You know, we'll make it red for the base color and we'll make it multiply okay it's that for the emissive turn this into a parameter this would be emissive strength default value of one so let's just go with the default value of zero so it's not emissive we'll go with that yeah we'll go with that okay so that should work there and then our sphere is going to have the timeline material so we'll go with that, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's hook this up into a key. So I'm gonna kick this into the T key. It'll make it easier. Like that, okay. So let's see, we're gonna create dynamic material instance on the sphere. So we get the default child, now just like that. I'm going to promote this to a variable, and this will be the sphere ID. And that's all we need to do there. We'll drive a timeline. Let's do this a simple two second timeline. Whoops, that would be the F1 key. <clears throat> I mean, can you just make video, for example, set relative location that includes everything about relative location? Um, what 
what would you expect to see about relative location in terms of um oh multiple obvious nodes in one video i can do that it just depends on if there's a reason to or not someone may be looking for something specific like what does this node do and not know that they need to look in you know set relative for example so by having different videos and trying to cover different examples for each video it generally makes it easier for searching for people that's my goal on that one uh, but if there are some obvious nodes that should be covered for example in our timeline right here we have the uh, play play from start reverse reverse from end basically all of these nodes right here these six nodes these will all be covered in one video all of the properties for the timeline will be covered in one video so things that make sense will be covered in one video because these are basically the playback controls these are the properties so those will be in multiple videos um, in this in one video for multiple nodes Also, my timeline. There we go. And good morning, Stefan. Okay, so all we're going to do with this one is put in a simple float. And this will be, um, we're going to go 0 through 10, like that. And we're going to add two keys just to start with. We're going to start off. And we're going to end off like that. We'll add another key in the middle and curve it like that. So we'll go something like that. Um, 0.5 is definitely not enough. So we're going to go with 5. Woo, look at that. No, that's 54. That would be an issue. One. There we go. OK, so yeah, let's go with that for our output. And then we're going to drive a simple set parameter. So let's grab our sphere and then set uh, parameter scalar. This will be an emissive, emissive strength. And we're going to drive it with our timeline. And I don't, I don't think I spelled emissive right, but I guess we'll find out. Okay. So let's let's see what happens here, shall we? T. Okay. Obvious. Oh. Uh. Ah. <sighs> let's see. Class defaults. Uh, auto receive input player zero. Now yeah, let's set the priority. <clears throat> let's try that. Seriously, take my input. Or did I not? No, I hooked it up. Okay, so we're not taking input, are we? No, we are taking input. Okay, so I just failed miserably. I'm guessing, did I not spell a missive strength right? Did I screw that one up? Yep, one M. Okay. How many M's are there in a missive? Let's find out. Oh, it's right friggin' there. There is only one M. Yep. I thought I spelled it wrong. Okay, let's try this again, shall we? T. Oops. Undo our breakpoint. Go back to uh, close that, play that, T. There we go. Okay, so that we can show, then we can show what play is. We can show play from start. In case anyone's wondering, I'm doing, setting up the example videos to show how timelines work. Okay, so that sets up the timeline for that. Okay, so this is the basic. So we have we can stop it at any point by calling. So let's set up another key. We'll call it Y. And we'll have the Y key stop it. So we can show it in the middle. So if we hit the T key and then the Y key, there we go. It'll never pull. So we hit the T key again. It'll play from the start and finish. Y key stops at any point. We can set up the Y key to reverse. This should reverse from where it currently is. So if we do T and then Y, we do that. And if we do a reverse from end, it should go light and then, yep. So start from end. Okay, so those are good. Set new time. I don't think I've ever played with this node before, this input. Can 
Can you get the, let's see, my timeline. Can you get the length, uh, let's see, get timeline length. Okay, let's do, um, let's see, that's TY, let's do U. And let's set up U to set new time. And let's adjust my timeline out to something like five seconds. Let's split these over a greater duration. So my example should go longer now. Let's go ahead and have this immediately, you immediately end it. So let's see if that works. So T, five seconds. There we go, okay. Play this again, T, whoops, T, and then you should immediately end it, okay. And if we do Y, okay. So that's what the set new time does, is just simply going to set the immediate playback. Okay, so those are easier enough. This is if we're going forward or backwards. Yep, forward and backwards, okay. <sighs> Update and finished, those are easy enough. So let's um, print string. And actually, you know what, it's kind of funny. It's, we'll just do that. And it should print out the duration of the timeline once we're done. Five seconds. Okay, cool. So that's what that is right there. And if we were to immediately stop it, it does work. If we immediately reverse it, it does not call finished. Okay, so that's good examples for that. <clears throat> um, what are your videos you use parameter collection to desaturate all the materials in the scene? Why didn't you just use post-processing to do that? Because I wanted to show how to use the desaturation node. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I'm pretty sure I was showing um, uh, the material is it's the uh, yeah I'm pretty sure it was this one right here that I was showing how to use because I can't show how to use the desaturation node if I'm using post processing. Plus, it also allows you to. Um, the, the post-processing desaturate should be based on a scene level, whereas the desaturation node here is on the material level. So, um, for example, I could have my player not become saturized easy, uh, easily, and I could just have like the environment become desaturated. And using a material parameter collection lets me hit everything at once for all the materials that support it. But my guess is you're talking about one of the material videos, and that's the only way to, uh, that's showing the desaturation node. Okay, so we can cover that. Individual things in here. We have our different tracks. Event tracks are only for matinee, right? Or... Man, I have not, I don't know if I've ever used. Okay, now I'm super, let's see. I don't think I've ever used an event track. Let's see, components, timeline, event track. Let's see what that created. And it's just a float curve. Okay. So, what the hell's. Uh, let's see. So if I was to, uh, I don't want to use the track. So let's clear out the track. Let's add two key points. I think I know what this will do, but I'm curious to see if that's what it'll do. Okay, interesting. So an event track will basically fire, I'm, get, I'm assuming, let's see, let's do a one second in with a value of 100. Let's do um, three seconds in with a value of zero. And this is a value of 100, okay. I'm assuming it should still fire at one and three seconds, and the number means nothing. 
one second in hello three seconds in oh yeah that's not gonna work um it's not gonna work at least for this example so we need to um <sighs> append and we're gonna append the time and we're gonna say event fired at and do that okay so we'll move that we'll move this down here we'll move this to here wow look at all those lines everywhere that's awesome yeah let's try let's see if this works Oh, because I'm getting the... Oh, I'm a dumb dumb. Um, uh, current get... Um, oh, get current... Can you get the... Um, the current time? Yeah, playback position. There we go. That's what we wanted. Only back one second, three seconds. Okay, so that's what the events are. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> my project has decided to become corrupt, and UE4 doesn't have a backup system that I know of. Not a happy camper right now. Uh, that's a bummer. Um, it might have a backup system, but I don't remember where it's at. Because you do have, when things crash, you do technically have backup assets it tries to restore. There you go. But I don't know how much that's going to help. See, you have you have saved, you have under your project, you have saved, and then you have autosaves and backup. But I don't know, maybe if you can figure out which asset is bad, you can pull it back in. Yeah, but this is also a good reason why everyone should use a source, source control, get CVS, Perforce, something like that. Do it every time you're done, and then you can just roll back to when it doesn't happen. Um, so it decided to become corrupt. What do you mean by corrupt? What uh, What's it doing? Okay. So that... Um, Here's the question. I'm gonna cover the properties in a properties video. I'm gonna cover the inputs in an input video. I'm gonna cover a basic overview. But do I wanna cover all four? Crap, do I wanna cover all four? Let's see, so these are how to get, yeah, this is for input. Damn it, do I wanna cover? I think I want to drive what is a timeline with basic information. And then, so let's see, let's, let's write this out. Um, so this is, um, let's see, cover the main timeline node and what we would use it for. What is the purpose of it? And then time line link back properties. Uh, what would be a good name for these things? Um, we'll just go with just properties. Go with straight properties, okay. And then we have um, oh, crap. Um, now oh, you know, you know what? It is timeline curve types. I'm just gonna go with the curve types video. Cover the individual curve types and what we might use them for. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that as a separate video because the curves themselves are gonna be covered in their own video, but the event track is not a normal curve. 
So should that cover everything? What is the timeline? So basically this mess but explaining it and then a video explaining our inputs and how they work. A video explaining curve types and how they would work and what we'd use them for. A video explaining the properties. Okay, I think that'll work. Um, oh wow, crash on startup. Uh, CVS, um, or CSC, uh, it, uh, it's a friggin' backup system, basically. Um, I, what's the stupid, um, it's source control is what it is. Um, uh, I think CVS is just a, a one of the different types, is what it is. Concurrent version system, there we go, is what it is. It's a version control system, basically. I always call it CVS because that's just what I'm used to. But something like GitHub, or Bitbucket, or Perforce, or SVN, or any of those things should work. It crashes on startup. Any idea what you did last? You could always try removing the offending blueprint if it's a blueprint causing it. Okay, so let's see if we can get this. So I need a cover the main timeline node and what we'll use it for. What is the purpose of it? Then we need to cover. So let's see if we can do multiple timelines. We're gonna cover, we're gonna pull this stuff out, paste it here. Okay, and this will be secondary timeline. This one is simply going to cover, let's, let's, what order are we gonna put these in? Playback properties. So this one's gonna need these things. Well, we'll copy that down. So the playback properties. So we're gonna cover all these. We don't need the um this one so we can get rid of that one we just need the output driving something we don't need the firing event and then our finish event okay so that's fine there this one we can get rid of these because we're not going to use these yep yeah, so we'll just cover this is what it does push a button something happens this one's push this button, this happens, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so we'll cover all the individuals. It'll set the color thing. This is an end event. Finish, this covers that. We'll cover the direction for equal. So I can cover that right there. Setting new time. Okay, and set. Okay, so that'll cover our playback property. So now we need another one covering the properties internally. So we'll do this one. This is going to cover our different nodes. Oh. Well, that's a bummer. For the post processing node having it crashing. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. And then that should basically running the whole time there we go so that's the autoplay option looping should loop the whole time. you know we don't need five seconds on this one so let's drop it back down to two move back down to one move back down to two and play and this should give us a looping yep yeah, okay so that's what our loops and auto plays for replicated if it's replicated on the network ignore time dilation which means i need a slowdown node in here so let's see um set global time dilation actually i can set this in the oh, blueprint right let's see Wait. I should be able to. Yeah. But where in the hell? Okay. Where in the hell is this hiding at? It's not going to tell me 
I don't remember where it's at. Okay. So let's um, let's grab one of our shortcut keys here. Let me grab our T key and pull it down. There we go. We'll go with that. Where'd my recording go? Okay, yeah, everything's still going. Yeah, I'm gonna say um, if you can pinpoint, it, it, I'm assuming I was gonna suggest if you can get rid of just the post processing volume, but it's probably in the map, and the map is trying to auto load. So the only thing else I could think of is pull a, you know, rename that map, see if it crashes on load, like because it fails to find the map, maybe it'll default to another map. If not, copy another map in and rename it to see if you can get in. But if it's um, inside the U asset itself, you're kind of in trouble. There we go. Whoa. Huh. Oh, because I'm grabbing the wrong timeline, so that's really not going to help here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that is our time dilation. If we tell it to ignore time dilation, it should still fire in the normal time now. There we go. So there's our two seconds for our pulse. If we have time dilation set to not ignore, it should now take four seconds. Uh, assuming I compiled and saved my timeline, that is. There we go. And it should take four seconds. Our duration's only two. But that's not an issue. So I need to. Um, I don't need to show that. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry about that, James. It does suck. But usually, once it happens to a big project, that's when people start realizing they have to start backing stuff up, even if it's just copying it to a new folder every day. Once you lose something important, then it sucks. Oh, last keyframe. I don't remember what last keyframe does. Oops. Let's um let's go back to our time dilation. Set this back to one. Let's see. Uh, let's set this up here to two and two. Yep, yeah, okay. I want to say if we set it to loop without the last keyframe, this is when we should see what we want, right? Oops, let's compile save. I always forget that. And then last keyframe. Oh, I don't freaking remember. Uh, let's see, timeline use last keyframe. I know this has a use for looping. Let's see, if this is not active, the last keyframe of a sequence is ignored. This can help prevent skipping when in animation. Really? The last keyframe, oh, it probably ignores like this literal last one. So that way when it loops back to here. Okay, yeah, that makes sense then. That's, hmm, I don't have an animation, so that really doesn't help. I wonder if there's a good way of showing that as an example. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Basically, this last keyframe is going to be zero, and then it's going to loop back and start at zero. If we have this unchecked, oh wait, right? Yeah, it's basically going to go down to you know point whatever, like right 
uh, what do we got? What? Right. Oh, wow, that's zero. That really doesn't help. Because they're all sharp. But let's change it to something like. Let's see, time. Right there. There we go. Okay, that'll work. That'll work for my example for explaining last keyframe. That'll make it easy enough. Not going to be really visible, but I can explain. Okay, cool. So we're good there. So that was the properties. Let's see. So we have the timeline, playback properties, properties, and now we need curve types. So let's grab that first one, which I completely destroyed. Oh, wait. Yep, I completely destroyed it. That's lovely. So let's just um, screw it. Actually, um, um, yeah, because well, we're going to want to use that for float. Yeah, so let's grab our that's uh, like that. Grab him down here. Play from start. Okay, so this will be our example of our float track. So let's rename these to make them easier. Float track. 0 through 10. And that's definitely not 0 through 10, so let's just call it float track. Okay, so we're going to drive that. Let's find our material and let's edit our material to allow other things. So we're going to convert this one to a parameter and we'll call this one color. And we'll drive this with a vector. The default is going to be red. Okay, so. Not a vector, yeah, a vector, no, color track, hmm. Because uh, we have to do the um, set, it's a vector parameter, right? Scalar vector, this should be a third friggin' parameter, seriously, are you going to do this to me? Yeah, scalar te okay, not a texture. So we have a ve yeah, so it's got to be a vector, but the input vector is a linear color structure. Seriously? Okay, let's just add a float track. Let's add a vector track, a color event track. Oh, where did my other tracks go? Seriously? There we go. Oh, it's adding them top to bottom. That's annoying. Or, wait, how the hell is it adding these in? Okay, let's figure this out. Delete, delete, delete. Okay, nothing selected, add a vector track, it goes below. Select this one, add a vector track, and it still goes below. Oops. Add a event track, it goes above. Vector track, another vector track's going above. Seriously, do you just, no, it went below, okay. Vector, wow, so is there a specific order it looks like? Looks like event tracks on the top, float tracks, color tracks, and then. No, that's not a color. This is this should be a vector, right? Oh, fuck's sake! All right, that's a vector, and this is a color track. Okay. Color track. Oh, that's color color track. Do I want to call these color curves? Yeah, color. Okay, and this one's an event track. the vector track okay so that'll work and there's our outputs yeah our vector is gonna yeah, that's funny it's friggin hilarious technically this is calling for a vector but instead of actually taking in a vector because it's a material it's taking in a linear color structure and we can always convert too so that's a double funny but let's not do that let's do that for more like um Oh, uh, we'll drive a position off the vector track. We'll drive the color, whoops, off of here. And then uh, the event track. I'll drive something off the event track. Let's drive a position. So we want our sphere. Uh, let's get the actor. Get actor. Then we're going to set. So set actor location. Ooh, look at that big old one. Drive that off the vector track. And, uh, yeah, that should work. Okay, so we already know that the pulse works. So let's do the location on a vector track because that's technically our second track, which is not even, oh, for fuck's sake, seriously? Okay, so we have 
float vector color event float vector event color and then on here we actually have event float vector and color so they're not even the same so I'm why do I have a feeling that this output is the order that I created them in this output is whatever the frick it cares about so let's see let's add in a vector track and see what it does here's a vector track it added it in fourth and on here it added in third okay so it doesn't really give a rat's ass on what it does okay well <sighs> not a big deal so vector track let's add in a key of the There's our, okay, so how do we do an individual? Okay, cause that's cause I have all three curves selected. So if I want to put it just on the red, I could do that. I want to do it just on the green, I could do that. If I want to do it just on the Z, I can do that. Okay, this is, uh, do, do, do. and this is an external curve cause I don't have anything I can put it on. So let me add a key to all curves, add a key and value to all curves. Let's do that one. Whoa, and it's gonna give me three of them, isn't it? Oh, I fucking hate vectors. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. And zero, zero. Okay, so this should move the item to zero, zero when we start it. There we go. So that worked perfectly fine. So let's find the starting location. Uh, let's do 300, negative 30, 100. There we go, 300, negative 300 on the X. So we can find our timeline. Grab only our X, let's see, this should be 300. And then our Y was 30, 30. our Z is somewhere. Where's our Z? 100. So now it should do nothing when I hit the button. Yep. Okay, cool. We're working gear. Good there. Lock everything. Zoom out. There's our three points for our three axes. Now let's just simply move the item to the right and up. So we're going to move it 200 Y. So reverse that. Let's grab our Y. We have a two. Whoa. Holy crap. Crap, I'm zoomed in. That's not helpful at all. There we go. Uh, after two seconds, we are going to, let's see, we want that on the Y. We're going to add a key to Y. It's going to be a value of 200 at two seconds, I think it was. I want to say that's what it was. Let's find out. Okay, cool. And then we'll move it up on the Z, so we'll unlock Y, lock everything, unlock Z, add the key to Z, value is going to be, let's go, let's do start with 100, let's go with 250, so we go up a bit more after 2 seconds, um, you know what, actually let's put this at 1.5, so we can show the difference here, there we go, so now it should do that, and then go to the right, there we go, okay, so there's a vector curve for driving things, so there's that example. <sighs> Which is funnier than hell because then we're setting a oh, fuck, we're setting a vector parameter. Oh, I don't want to confuse people. <sighs> okay, because technically setting vector might just confuse the shit out of people. So this is a user. I can't. Oh, I could drive something in the user interface if I want. I guess. We'll drive, we'll do a lerp from two different colors for user interface is what we're going to do on the color track. That's what we're going to do. So let's create a special user interface. We'll call this one timeline UI blueprint. There we go. And let's fake a health bar, shall we? Let's do something like that. Lock it to the top left and align it to the top left. Let's make it 60 by 400. Let's see. 
Yeah, that'll work. Okay, uh, let's see. We want it green. Oh, that's it. There we go. So we'll start with green. We'll go down. Start it at 100%. And we'll call this one our um, player life bar. Like that. And we have to. We're going to drive the color directly from there, and we'll drive the percent. No, I'm gonna have to make a new event in here. Custom event, um, update live bar. We're gonna take in the new value. Um, we'll go with the new shit. <sighs> no, all we're doing is driving the color. Yeah, never mind. This is just an example for driving the color. That's all it is. So we're just gonna keep it simple. So where's my begin play? It's up here somewhere. We are going to create a widget. It's gonna be the timeline, uh, not the tin line, the timeline user interface. And we're going to uh, promote it and then add it. Let's call it our um, line UI reference. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so let's see if that goes on the screen. Yep, there's our bar. Go down to our color. So on our update, we are going to, let's see, we need to get our timeline reference. We're going to get the life bar and we're going to set the uh, fill color and opacity. Fire that off here. Run this to right here. Okay, and the end color is going to be our color track. So let me fire this off. There we go. It goes to black because we haven't done our bar. Here's our color track. Let's see. We are going to um, let's see. Oh, I fucking I hate working with the color one. I hate it so much. Green, because I, I want, yeah, thank you. No, zero, zero, please. And then zero, thank you. And then we'll just drive it down to a green here. We're gonna, I've got a green. We'll drive this down to a red like that. And we'll keep the opacity. Let's do two seconds. Let's say half opacity, just so we can have some sort of a look. Okay, so now it should drive it. There we go. There we go. So it just simply drives the color. Now if we had the actual health bar update itself, which technically this is not the right way to do this, but this is just for a f maybe, maybe, oh, hold on a second. Oh, okay, I'm waiting for my copy of Final Fantasy in the mail and it's not here yet. I thought it was here. I don't want to confuse people. So let's do it more of a like a um, Let's do it more of an like an alert thing uh, instead of a health bar um, Let's do this more of a um, Oh crap you got hit here's a Here's a, um, okay, you need to stop it, you stupid thing. Here's an alert that, you know, you, you got hit, you might want to pay attention type thing. We'll do it like that. You know, like a little screen flash. Yeah, we'll do that. That'll work. Te oh, technically you could do a, what if I did something really silly. What if we did something along that same line? 
bam, stretch the whole thing, reset it like that. We're gonna set it to um, zero opacity, uh, zero, zero, zero. So there we go, let's try this. Let's see what happens if we do this. This would be kind of silly. We're gonna go from no opacity to no opacity. And we're gonna go from our red color to our red color, which this one, why do these, those, oh, because I had one selected and one not. There we go, we'll add a new color here. Oh, I don't need a new color, I need new opacity. Here we go. And we'll drive this an opacity of 0.2, like that, um, at one second in. Let's see what happens we do this, after I just broke something in my graph, because we don't have that anymore. Okay, so this is get image, right? Go back in here. Let's rename this um, full screen. Yeah, uh, full screen image. There we go. Go back in here. Uh, set color and opacity. Drive it off of that and do that. Okay, let's try this. Oh, obviously I did not. Um, snap the image properly but we don't discuss weird things like that uh we should not have an offset <laughs> that's funny okay there we go so we'll try this there we go you've been hit kind of like an effect where we drive a timeline just to drive a little bit of a hit and you could even do something the nice thing is you could even since it's a timeline if i can figure out where i put my timeline here we go you could have that even driven more like a um Something like this. We're gonna go to um, immediately, and then we are going to have it flash temporarily. Drop this down to 0.1, slowly fade out to zero, like that. Let's try that. There we go. See, so it's a quick hit, and then it slowly fades out. There we go. That works. Okay, that works for my color example. I'm happy with that. It's a lot better than life bar. Hopefully we'll confuse less people that way. Uh, and then we need an event track. So uh, event track, what do we want to do with an event track? I mean, cause you could, hmm. Okay, let's take our, let's take this um, to another level. Let's take our text here. Slap this in the bottom right, set our anchor to the bottom right, set our alignment like that, there we go. Can you please not adjust my position? Thank you. Auto adjust. Uh, let's see, we're gonna, we don't need auto size. We need our position X to be negative 100 and our position Y to be negative 25. Ah, just grow, we'll go negative 100. Yeah, there we go. We are going to align to the right. We are going to change this into 100. We're going to make this light and 52, like that. Okay, that should work. And we're going to call this one player life text box. Make it a variable. Yeah, okay. And we'll just say we have a variable in here called player health. And we'll set it to uh, integer of 100 by default. Like that. There we go. And we're going to drive a get the UI, get the player health. And then we're going to set the text to a value and every single time we fire off the event track we're going to basically take the last player health and we're going to subtract um, we'll go 25 and we need to set the player health like that so uh, you over disconnect you move you right there right there 
Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll move you down because you're now in the middle of everything. Uh, there we go. Come on. You can do it. Okay. And then the in text should be equal to the player health. Uh, really? You're going to make me drop it and then convert it? Really? Really, really? And let's make sure there's always three digits. Like that. Okay, so in theory, every time this event track fires off, it should subtract 25 health. So we need to find where the event track went to. It's right here. We can like add in three keys at any given point like that. And if I hooked it up, which I did not, we still have our color one hooked up. So let's drag this. Oh yeah, no, it's the event track. No, it should be firing. I don't know, let's find out. Let's try that again. Well, obviously we broke something. That was just really silly. Huh. Hello, Alex. One would assume we have done this properly, but assuming is getting us an improper result. Here is my event track, and I have... I have three events to fire off. Hmm. Maybe they need to be at least zero. Shouldn't be. Okay, Mr. Event Track, why are we not working? Oh, uh, I'll be right back. Maybe. All right, got my game. Now I'm happy. Um, hello, Alex. I'm working on doing the timeline examples right now and failing miserably apparently because for whatever reason my event track isn't firing. What, oh, what the fuck? Uh, uh, oh, I tag nab, I never hit the. Oh, I friggin' hate timelines. I always forget, even if you make any changes in here, unless you hit the stupid save button inside of the timeline, it doesn't save the timeline update. Always forget that. And this one will be the um, curve examples. And this one will be the properties examples. Oops. Can I rename? Can I please rename that? This will be the playback playback properties examples. And this one's just simply the timeline. Timeline example. Okay, there we go. I think I've got these four done. We have each of our tracks outputting properly. Technically, if I was to do this again, we should get a red pulse. Yep, that's how you can run multiple things at the same time. Ah, okay, cool. So there are my four different tracks. That will work. Now let's go back to here. Yeah, there's my different curve types. And then import. Okay, so that wasn't very hard. All my curve examples are done. What the hell? It took 56 minutes. That went a lot quicker than I thought. Let me double check. Um, we have our main timeline example. <sighs> discuss multiple curves, discuss
plain stuff, discuss outputs, show outputs, show an example by hooking it up to the key. Then we have our playback examples. We can playback each of these. We have one different output with the different ones. We don't need that because that is the uh, beginning one. And then we have a finished for the playback properties. We have our properties itself. Uh, using last keyframe, autoplay, looping, replicated, and ignore time dilation. And I've got time dilation set up, so we're good there. I don't need this again. And then we have our curve examples. We have our, let's double check, make sure everything works. We should have the normal float curve to make the thing glow. We have the actor location, like that. We have color and opacity, which should make the screen pulse and then we have an event track which should make us lose life yeah okay so there's our tracks right there um, okay so I should probably do examples on uh, let's see I'm gonna need an let's see we're gonna um, actually that shit that's hmm it still doesn't cover the nodes though. Oh. So we need technically, um, let's see, we need technically, uh, cut. we need at least, is time timeline um, playback nodes and then timeline, timeline property nodes so those are cover the nodes for let's see library component they're in here somewhere components timeline okay so these are the I don't know those are different okay so we have oh I'm gonna have to write these down make sure I cover all these okay so let's let's drag this off the screen and let's start filling stuff up here. So our playback nodes, let's see, because we, here we go. So our playback nodes are gonna be play, play from start, reverse, reverse from end, stop, I'm pretty sure that's it. Play, play from start, stop, reverse, reverse from end. Yeah, okay, so those are playback nodes. Eh. Should the time be a playback node? Technically, it's an input. Let's see. Um, set new time. Can we actually do that, actually? Um, set playback position. Is that technically the new time? Jump to a position in the timeline. Um, I guess technically that would be a playback node. Anything that anything that affects the playback, I think I'm going to do in here. Um, playback position because it's a getter and a setter. Um, timeline length adjusts the curve so I don't want to do that I'll technically adjust uh, technically that hmm. no because that won't affect the playback itself it won't stop it or start it it'll just adjust the length length mode setting the curves are different you know our time daily okay so let's go into our properties then um, timeline properties are um, ignore time dilation Looping, playing, rever oh, reversing. Is reversing. I guess, oh shit. Okay, let me start putting all these in here and we'll go from there. It's reversing, um. Setting the curves doesn't mount. Uh, time dilation I already have in here. Curve doesn't matter. Looping I already have in here. New time. Technically I have... Um, what the fuck is new time? 
Let's put these in the other, the last one. New time. Okay. Let's see, I can throw one above. And this would be timeline curve setters. There we go. And this is the um, set float curve set linear color curve set vector curve. You can't set an event curve, can you? Okay. So let's see. We have um, time dilation in here. Play rate play rate. Play rate is a completely different one. So we need to put that in here. Play rate. Uh, playback position. Uh, that's here. Timeline length. Um, these would be more like properties of the actual timeline itself. Uh, is looping, is playing, is reversing. Play, play from start, reverse, reverse from end, setting the curve, ignore time dilation is here, linear color curve, looping, new time, we got that there, set play rate, we got that there, playback position, you know what, I'm, oops, I'm going to put that, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't like that, I'm going to put that here. Timeline length, we've got there. Timeline length mode. Timeline length mode. Vector curve and stop. Okay, cool. That'll work. Those are all the timeline nodes. Okay, so we'll put this back over here. Pull chat back up. Uh, let's see, this is weird. It was an INI config file. I delete all of them in the config folder and I'm able to open the project. It's compiling stuff at the moment, but seems to be working. A few errors about the clip plane not being set, but so far so good. Um, that's good. You're doing it on a clone, so that's actually a good start. Um, it's possible that it was just simply overloading because of the INI, maybe you changed them. Um, I, I don't know. I'd love to know if you figure out what it is. So if you figure out what um, INI setting caused your crash issue, it would be nice to know, just so I can be aware of it and run away from it in the future. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, I think I might do one of these. I think I'm gonna do the playback um, nodes. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the playback nodes example and then call it a day. That one shouldn't be too bad. So let's figure out where it is. Okay, so this is just our generic timeline. These are all of our things for the timeline itself. What is a timeline and the individual what is. So now we need to do a new... Um, technically, I, technically, I could do it all in here, right? Like this one's the... Um, yeah, screw it. I'll do it all in one. I'll just move over the trigger each time. Um, make this nice and clean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe you did something like turn on forward rendering and it caused the issue, or you turned on something funky like that, and then once it restarted, it tried to initialize it, and then it was like ah, and it crashed. Ah. Uh, okay. You know what? I'm actually gonna take a. If anyone would like to give me some input on this, I will ask the question. Right now I've got four videos I'm going to do. Basically what is a timeline and what might we use it for. Then a video explaining the playback properties. Um, playback properties. Playback properties. Why the hell do I call it playback properties? Hold on a second. Oh, playback properties. I 
I do not like the word playback properties. Okay, so we'll just go with, whoops. We're just gonna go with the property, the playback examples. And this is gonna cover what each of these input nodes are. What play, play from start, stop, reverse, reverse from end, set new time, all of these do. As well as the output. So basically all of our node, um, input and output executes. Then we're gonna have a properties example, which is gonna explain these settings, what they do. Then we're gonna have another one showing what each curve is and what we might use each curve for. Now on top of that, I still have the actual nodes themselves to cover. So technically it would be the um, these nodes. I have, I don't know, however many there are, 20 nodes that have to be covered. Technically, those nodes have their own part in here. Like these are the playback properties. I could also show that there's nodes for each of those properties. Here's the internal properties, like the dilation and the keyframe. I could do explain that they have their own node for that and then show the nodes in here. This one is the curve examples. I could show how to use the existing curves as well as setting new curves. And then um, anything that's left like the um, those last funky ones that I had question marks on. Uh, play rate, new time, timeline length, things like that. Things that are not um, technically part of anything else, I could do a separate video on. So basically the question is, do I do the four videos and make them more in depth than normal? Basically rather than one node, one video per node, I group the nodes together, which I plan on doing, but I also include them, the internal and external versions. Cause I mean, you have, here's what these do. And I explain them all. There are nodes that also set that over here. For example, is looping and the um, set looping. You have set looping, you have the getter and the setter for looping right here, and then you also can set it inside the curve. So explain that basically. So spend a minute or two on each property, including their no yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think that's what I should do. I mean, I could I could double the number of videos I do, but oh crap, I don't like keeping them long though. But I don't have to, not if I just explain that there are nodes. Okay, you know what, you know what? Nope, no, no, nope. I don't have to do it. As long as I explain that there's nodes for each of these properties, then it won't be an issue. I can just keep this open and explain. Here's how to loop, and if you want to do it at runtime, we have the setter and the getter for looping. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna do that. So I need to cover those funny nodes. So let me drag this over here and see if I can figure out what these funny nodes are. So we have new time. New set new time. There we go. And that's a set new time. That's not okay. So let's update this. Okay, so set new time, which is technically this one, but I also have. What the fuck is there an input? Oh my god, I don't want to read through the code. Oh well, let's figure this out, I guess. Um. Where is my fucking keys? Here we go. Whoops. Disconnect that. Put these up here. Oops. Let me take my keys back up to here. Oops. My keys. I need my keys right here. There we go. So there's my keys. If I hit the U key. Oh, set new time is an execute wire, but we have to set the new time. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, that that's kind of that's why I like just talking out loud and trying to see which one sounds right. I don't mind doing the individual nodes, but I mean, technically, I'm gonna be here explaining all of our inputs. I'm gonna be explaining what play, play from start, stop, reverse, reverse from end, and set new time do. And it seems kind of weird to say, okay, so here's these nodes, and then do a whole another video that goes, okay, well, here's the same nodes, and just, I don't know, it seems kind of weird. That's all. No, I, I talked myself into to, um, to doing it at once. Uh, but I also fi finally figured out what the set new time is for. So technically, this set new time node is these two things combined into one. That's kind of funny. Okay. So set new time technically goes along with the playback. So we've got that. So what is our play rate? 
Because I sure as hell don't see play rate in here. I'm not crazy, right? We have our length, which has its own node, right? Yeah, so the... And we have... Okay, so we have this node. We have these two nodes, which I don't know what they do. Okay, hold on a second. Um, timeline length isn't an issue. I can cover that in the first one. Play rate is one I'm trying to figure out. Playback position. Um, why would, what would, uh, see, set new time. Set the new playback position time to use. Jump to a position. What would be the difference of these? Hmm. I don't know. Setting new time from what I saw basically set the new time. Setting playback position. Unless new position isn't a time. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe position is a position and not a time. Maybe this is a 0 to 1. Rather, 0 to 100%. And this is... Okay, so I'm going to have to look into those two. What the hell are these? Timeline length mode. Set the length mode of the timeline. Timeline length or time... What the hell? There's three of them here, right? Two of them? Okay, that is... We have timeline length and timeline... What the fuck? These aren't in the timelines. Right? I'm like, I'm not crazy. These are not in here anywhere. External curve, importing, synchronize, the different things. This is the length. Key... Use last keyframe. Um, oh. Oh, really? This node... Oh, wow. Okay, I think this... Yeah, no, okay. So that node... That's funny. I wonder why they did that. Huh. Well, my best guess... I'm going to have to test this, obviously. But my best guess is this checkbox here for using last keyframe is the same thing as using this node to set it between the last keyframe and the timeline length. Because this checkbox is technically the only one. Oh, you know, autoplay is missing too. Looping is in there. Oh, replicate is not in there either. Replicate is not in there. Time dilation is. Looping is. Play rate. Play rate. What the? F okay, seriously. <sighs> these. Yep. You know what? I need to. Um. I need to stop confusing myself. I need to pull these nodes out. I need to comment this. I'm gonna work on this tomorrow. What the hell do these do? I have a feeling that this is the. Um, keyframe node. I have a feeling that's the use last keyframe node. Don't know what that one is. Technically, uh, I already, okay, so I know what set new time is. So, but what is the difference between that one? I'm hoping that's a zero to one. What the hell is set play rate? Uh, play rate, playback position, Timeline length mode. Okay, so those are the nodes. I have no idea what they do. I have a feeling play rate might be um, autoplay. That oh, fuck. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look through the code for these tomorrow. So that's easy enough. Okay, no, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll look through the source for those tomorrow. I've already got these all figured out, so no real issues there. Okay. So I think that's good for the timeline stuff. I need to update this. Um, 
These ones technically are seeds. These are playback nodes, so we'll cover these in this one. Oops, went to copy. So we don't need this video. These are our property nodes, so um, technically is reversing. Where, let's see, is reversing. <sighs> is playing, is reversing. I guess technically that would be part of the playback node. So we have um, is playing. Okay, so make sure we cover those. And then we have, um, are these, let's do that so I can investigate what those are. Um, these we don't need in here. They've got, they can go into there. Okay. And then our playback properties are, where'd they go? What do we got? Uh, time dilation, looping. So we have time dilation, looping. And I have a feeling it's gonna be some of these other ones. So let's see, time dilation, looping. What else do we got in here? Uh, time dilation, loop. Yeah, we don't actually have, and I'm pretty sure it's that other one. I'm pretty sure it's um, uh, time and length mode. Uh, pretty sure it is. Okay, so these are these are horribly horribly gone. We're on the way. Oh, tomorrow's the twelfth, the first of the friggin' year. Okay, so didn't have a bunch of people watching today. Today's wasn't exactly the most exciting because timelines aren't that exciting. But I wanted to cover them anyway, so I'm not happy, too worried about it. I'm happy with I'm happy with my examples though, so I'm good there. These ones I'm going to work on tomorrow. Hopefully I can basically figure these out, look through the source code, figure out what they do, put them in the correct categories, get the timeline um, example project completed so that way it's ready for recording this weekend. And then if there's time, find something else to work on. I have no idea. Um, but that's pretty much going to wrap it up. We did, what, an hour and a half today, an hour and... An hour and 20 minutes. Uh, I appreciate everyone for hanging out, asking questions. Hopefully you get your project fixed. Um, James, hopefully that, that works for you. Uh, if you figure out what caused it, feel free to let me know because I'd love to know. Just let me know whenever you show up. Tomorrow is Thursday, which means it is an official Epic stream. So I will be on after, so probably somewhere around... Um, I want to guess closer to 1 tomorrow because tomorrow is the Game Jam stream. So depending on how much time they spend, uh, it may run from 12 to like 12.30 or 1. So I'll be on after that. And I will finish up timelines and work on other stuff. Any questions, any comments, feel free to leave them wherever you want. Any requests, any suggestions, any help, feel free to catch me wherever you can. Other than that, I'm going to kill the stream and let it idle for about 30 seconds so it doesn't just drop out. Everyone have a good day.